test? I'll meet you. Thank you. Can we just test levels? Because I was a bit quiet this morning, apparently. I do have a low voice. So could you just make sure yeah, I've got... Just, just I, don't, I can't do much about my voice, but so, uh, it goes low. I think that's OK. Hello.
Well, welcome everyone. Those of you who are used to coming here and those of you who are visiting, it's lovely to see you all and welcome to everyone watching online. Now, who watched the Champions League final last night? Anybody watch it? Well, they, there was a quote afterwards. Obviously, it was a great match. But afterwards, one of the commentators said, Manchester United have entered the promised land. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody needs, everybody needs a husband in the congregation. You see, I, I was hoping, I'm hoping that next year it's Newcastle, but there we are. I give away my, my allegiance. But Manchester City have entered the promised land. That's what he said. And I thought he gave me my opening for today because we are going to go to the promised land. We're going to go in Joshua, we're going to think about the promised land and what that means, biblically, historically, but also for us today. And so let's gather as we think about the promised land this morning, which is much better even than Manchester City winning the Champions League, even though that's amazing. We enter the promised land in truth. So let's stand as we gather together for worship and say together, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let's stand for our first hymn, which is In Christ Alone. And the, last, the first verse and the last verse ends with, here in the power of Christ I stand. So as we stand, let us remember that we stand in the power of Christ this morning.
Please be seated. Now, I don't know what kind of week you've had. You might have sailed through it without any hitch. You might have faced obstacles. You might have lost your temper. You might have been a bit annoyed or angry with somebody. Or you might have felt a bit like things were just too hard. So we have the privilege of every week coming here together to confess before God, quietly, to prepare our hearts and to say to him what we have regretted this week and ask him for forgiveness. And so let us together confess our sins before God. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoings and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we have our first reading, and Anne is going to come. And it's a long reading, so get comfortable. <laughs> so, <clears throat> for our first reading, it's taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1. And then it's uh, chapter 24, the final verses from 29. Joshua installed as leader. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people Go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land your God is giving you for your own. But to the Reubenites, the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, the Lord your God will give you rest by giving you this land. Your wives, your children, and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan. But all your fighting men, ready for battle, must cross over ahead of your fellow Israelites. You are to help them until the Lord gives them rest, as he has done for you and until they too have taken possession of the land the Lord your God is giving them. 
After that, you may go back and occupy your own land, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan toward the sunrise. Then they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do, and wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whoever you may command them, whatever you may command them, will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Buried in the Promised Land. After these things, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. And they buried him in the land of his inheritance, in Timnath Serah, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gaish. Israel served the Lord throughout the time of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. And Joseph's bones, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem in the tract of land that Jacob bought for a hundred pieces of silver from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. This became the inheritance of Joseph's descendants. And Eleazar, son of Aaron, died and was buried at Gibeah, which had been allotted to his son Phinehas in the hill country of Ephraim. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Anne, for that mammoth reading. Uh, We're now going to have a song which everybody's going to have to join in. And we have got to do the actions. And after this song, the children will go out for junior church. So stand up and let's kind of get ourselves ready. And we're going to sing Be Bold. If we could have the words up on the screen. <clears throat> so when we say be bold, I want you to imagine you're holding a spear and you go be bold like this. So be bold and then be strong. Like this, be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. And then be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Then, I am not afraid, and then when we say that we go, no, 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 can we practice? No, no, no. I am not dismayed, not not me. me. For I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on, walk in faith and victory. For the Lord your God is with you. Right? Are we ready? Yes. Yes? Okay, I think it's over to you. Lovely. junior church so let me pray as you as you go our father we thank you for each child that's here this morning and we ask that you would bless them and encourage them be with the leaders as they teach and we pray that they would know your love 
and your joy this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> and now we have our second Bible reading, and Mike is going to bring that to us. Lovely. Thank you. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13, and then on to verses 18 to 26. The calling of Matthew. As Jesus went from on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, Many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Jesus raises a dead girl and heals a sick woman. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. Then a woman who had been the subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes, he said, go away, the girl is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand, and she got up. News of this spread through all that region. <clears throat> this is the word of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, we have our first slide. Lovely, thank you. So, as we know, we're approaching the holiday season. Quite a few of you have said to me, we're away this week, but we'll be back next week, or I'm away in July. And so, we're aware of people coming and going. And I had the idea that we could take a few weeks during this holiday period when we'll be coming and going to wander through the book of Joshua. Uh, we can take our time, um, and so that's what we're going to do. Now, Joshua is often thought of as a dusty historical book, telling of the events that happened to Israel immediately after the 40 years of their wandering in the wilderness with Moses. But it's important to remember that Joshua is not written just to inform us of the past. It was written to encourage us to trust in a faithful God who keeps his promises and to urge us to take hold of what God has already given us. And so this book is also prophetic and it should be read with the question in the back of our minds, what is God saying to us today? However, it does help to have a bit of historical context and so here goes. I won't go on too long. The events of the book of Joshua span about 25 years, starting soon after the death of Moses in around 1406 BC, before the conquest of the Promised Land began. And the long conquest took about seven years, and Joshua's final speech and death came almost 20 years later. And the book begins with the nation of Israel poised at the banks of the Jordan River just across from the imposing city of Jericho. And it recalls, probably in too much detail sometimes, the details of numerous campaigns 
where the inhabitants of the land were defeated. And the book ends with Joshua regathering, his regathering the nation for his final exhortation. And so next slide, please. Lovely. Who likes a box set? Anybody like watching box sets? Well, there's a kind of um, code, um, a practice watching box sets, especially if you lived with somebody, is not to tell somebody what comes next if you happen to have watched ahead. You shouldn't really tell people what happens at the end, but I'm going to do just that. So you can think of Joshua, the book of Joshua, as a box set. Um, and it comes with various stages of development. So the next slide, please. <clears throat> the first slide shows us Joshua and the people of Israel entering the land. And that is coming in chapters one to four. So over the next three weeks, we'll be looking at those chapters and thinking about the preparation and the cost of entering the land. Next slide. The next section from five to 12 is Joshua and the people taking the land. So in that section, there's lots of battles um, and we'll pick things out. So it's um, some significant things there. And we'll go through three weeks of that, thinking about how Joshua and the people took the land, what was involved there. Next slide. And taking the land wasn't enough. So the next set, the next video in the box set is possessing the land. How did they go about possessing it? What, how did they make it theirs? How did they own what God had been giving them? And that's from 13 to 21, and we will look at that later on in the summer. And then the last slide, please. And then all about retaining the land. What did the people of Israel have to do to keep what God had given them? And we will, of course, be thinking about how that relates to us today. What did these images of taking and giving and receiving and possessing mean for us in our lives today? And so over, as I've just said, slide seven, could we have my next one, please? That's lovely. This is where we are. Over the next three weeks, we'll be in the first section of the box set with the Israelites as they prepare to enter the promised land. And so this week, we will be looking at the edge of the Jordan, hearing how the Israelites come to terms with the death of Moses when they needed him most. And then next week, you're in for a treat. Um, I hear it on good authority. Victoria has been planning a, a drama. And we will be watching Junior Church lead us through the story of a heroic lady called Rahab. And that happens to coincide with the, um, the, the, uh, the Rose Queen, sorry forgot there for a second. The Rose Queen, I was going to call it the Rosebud and I knew it wasn't that, but there is a Rosebud as well. But the Rose Queen next week will be here and she'll be with us. And so we will be thinking about Rahab as we have the Rose Queen join us. And then the following week, we'll be with the Israelites as they cross over the Jordan. So that will be an exciting one. And during the rest of the summer, we'll hear how the Israelites took hold of possessed and retained the gift of the land, and we'll be considering how we can take hold and possess and retain all that God's promised for us to enjoy. So I'm hoping that we'll all be encouraged as we consider the faithfulness of God to keep his promises to us. And so let's begin. In order to take hold of what God has promised, we need the next slide. Here we are. We first need to see how resilient God's promise is, just how determined he is to make sure his promise comes true. So imagine you are Joshua and you're on the banks of a raging river, surrounded by thousands of people who are looking to you and they've been wandering around the desert following the man who'd rescued them from Pharaoh in Egypt, who'd taken them across the Red Sea, who'd stood in the gap between them and God when they disobeyed, who was the only one who would talk face to face with God, who'd brought them the law or the Torah down from the mountain, and who trusted him to be God's mouthpiece to the people. And this man has just died. And you and the whole people are in mourning. And it's at this point, God speaks to you and says, 
Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the River Jordan into the land I'm about to give them. And it's against the backdrop of the death of Moses, the incomparable Moses, that the writer reminds them of the promise given to Abraham in Genesis 15, verse 18. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said, to your descendants, I give this land from the wadi of Egypt to the great river of the Euphrates. Notice that God does not say, Moses, my servant has died, so you must wait and weep for several years. Or, now that Moses has died, my promise will not be fulfilled. No, God says, Moses, my servant has died, rise, cross over into the land, I'm about to give you. So Moses has died, but God's promise lives on. Yahweh's ability and intention to keep his promise does not depend upon men or women, however gifted they are, nor does it evaporate in the face of funerals or raging rivers. And for us today, our circumstances may change. People we love and respect might die. There may seem to be a raging river in front of us in our personal circumstances or in the turmoil of the world we live in. But, but God's promise to lead us into life and into freedom remains. And so along with this never changing promise, what are the other resources God makes available to us? The very next thing to hold on to is God's very presence. God has confidence that he can deliver on his promise, but he's very aware of what we are made. He knows of what we're made. He knows that when we're faced with loss and big changes, we are prone to lose heart. So we stop believing that God's for us. And it was no different with Joshua. We can imagine that his heart sank as he faced the prospect of taking up where Moses had left off. So what did God do? Did God tell him off? Did he rebuke him for his lack of faith? No. God came and he reassured Joshua that he was present with him. We read in verse 5, I will be with you. And it's interesting that these very same words were said to Moses, Joshua's hero, if you remember, when he was facing the Pharaoh in Exodus verse 12. And isn't it the case that we often believe that the people we look up to and admire are made of different stuff to us? We think that, that they were born gifted. But when we hear the real stories of our Christian heroes or heroines, they all sound quite similar. Most of them have had to overcome self-doubt and nerves and be reassured by God's presence before they could start to do anything out of their comfort zone. So it's this reassurance of God's presence that we're looking for. And the same pattern is here. Moses the hero had died, but the same God lives on and gives the same reassurance of his continued presence to Joshua. And this is the only reason why God can encourage Joshua to be strong and bold, because he knows that he will be with him. In verse 6 and 7 and 9, I will be with you. God will be the one who will go before Joshua. God will be the one who helps them to enter the promised land. And Joshua is not told to grit his teeth and find his own strength from within. He is to be strong only because he trusts that God will be with him. And so this assurance of God's presence will keep coming back throughout the book of Joshua. And we see this same promise being repeated in the early church in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hence, we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? So isn't it amazing 
that the promises made to Moses and to Joshua are also being said to us, I will be with you, I will not forsake you. What's the next resource? We have God's word, and we read in verse 7 to 8. We are to be careful to do what the Lord has instructed us. The Israelites had a daunting prospect before them, but this wasn't an excuse to neglect the study of God's word. And even though they were preparing for battle, or maybe you could say, especially because they were preparing for battle, they were encouraged to meditate on God's law day and night so they would be careful to do what was written. So constant, careful absorbing of the word of God leads to a desire and then the obedience to do it. And the command is given specifically to Joshua as the leader of God's people, but it includes everyone. So life, living freely in the kingdom of God, in the promised land, does not arise from gimmicks. And just like some of us who are trying to lose weight, there's no shortcut or special pill we can take. Only our freedom to live in the promise of God comes from the word of God that's already been spoken and from obedience to that word. And I know for myself that stress will sometimes try to rob us of the desire to read God's word for ourselves. But I reassure you, time and again, as soon as we go back to it, there we find the encouragement, the courage and the peace that we've been looking for everywhere else. The fourth resource. This is God's people. If you look around, the passage is telling us about how important unity between the Israelites was if they were going to succeed. They needed to see that all the battles, um, that they were in all the battles together. And so the section from 12 to 18 is referring back to a time when in Numbers 32, the tribes of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh had requested that Moses assign them the land to the east of the Jordan when they reached the Promised Land. Well, this could be seen as disloyal and splitting up of the whole people of God and into those who would not have to cross the river and those who would have to be brave enough to cross the river and deal with then what they found. But although God did intend for those tribes to have the land that they'd requested, he commanded the men to show unity and cross with the rest of the men over the Jordan and be ready for battle. And after that, they'd be able to go back and occupy their own land. So we can see here some implications for the practice of the church. Unity amongst God's people isn't a luxury, and we need to care enough so that others amongst us don't get discouraged. We need to think about what we're doing. Will this discourage others? And in Hebrews 10, verse 25, we read that we're not to give up meeting together, but to encourage one another. We are part of the body of Christ, and if one part hurts, so does the rest. And if one part rejoices, then again, so do we all. And that is an incredible strength that we have available to us as members of the body of Christ. So Moses had died, but God didn't leave Israel. And no matter what we face now, and I know that some of us are facing quite considerable challenges right now, but whatever we face now or in the future, we still have God's promise. We still have God's presence. We still have God's word. And we still have each other, we have God's people, to help us when we face what seem to be insurmountable obstacles. Lastly, at the end of the book of Joshua, we we seem to be back where we started, with three more funerals mentioned. Those of Joshua, of Joseph's bones, and of Eleazar, son of Aaron. And we're reminded that a funeral doesn't take away from God's promise. We must put our trust in God, not in men. They will die, just as Joseph, Moses, and Joshua did. The last verse is pointing us to the ultimate answer which comes in the birth, life, and death 
and resurrection of Jesus. As we read in our Gospel reading, he has the power to raise us from the dead, and he's the only one who rose again from the dead. And as we reminded ourselves last week on Trinity Sunday, God is three persons in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And by the work of the Holy Spirit, we can rely on the promises of God, even today. And know that through his Son, we can be bold and courageous, because Christ's presence is always with us. And we can be reminded that, of that through meditating on his word and joining in unity with his people, we will experience that sense of freedom. And so I leave you with this last slide. Yes. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. So we're going to sing a hymn now that isn't in your books, and some of you will know it, and some of you won't, but it's a beautiful hymn, and it's worth us learning. And it's talking about how we live through the power of Christ, not by our own strength, which is what Joshua was being told. And so let us, even if you don't know this, you will pick it up, and I promise you, you'll be humming it to yourself later in the day. So we stand together to sing, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me.
remain standing as we affirm our faith together in the words of the Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ, our Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as Sandy brings us our intercessions. Let us pray. Lord, there are many things that prevent your word from taking root in our lives. Help us to set them aside that we may receive your word today. Lord, we live in a world of change and every day is filled with uncertainty. We are surrounded by the twists and turns of life and often feel we have no control over things that happen to us. Lord, we come to stand in your eternal presence to come to find ourselves, to find our way, to find hope. We come to you because in Christ you came, you first came to us. Thank you, God, that you are always there and never change. Your love sustains us. We praise you for Jesus Christ, who through his life, death and resurrection has shown us the full measure of your love that will never be defeated. We praise you for coming into our world to be with us, sharing our suffering and pain. We pray that we can be filled with love for you as we try and understand the mystery and power of Jesus' death and resurrection and help us to feel its power in our lives. Amen. Lord, we bring before you all those who are in need for those who are ill and for those who care for them. We pray for the medical profession as they use their skills to heal the sick in mind and body. We pray for those who have important decisions to make and for those who are unsure of what tomorrow will bring. We pray for all the young people that we know who at the moment are or have done exams Help them to feel free of too much stress and enjoy some relaxing times. We pray for our neighbours, our family and our friends and any we know who need to hear of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ upon their hearts. We pray for those who are bereaved. We pray for, that they may have the comfort of your love to help them. We pray for ourselves. We are your creation and we are awesome. We are capable of amazing acts of kindness, love and understanding. When bad things happen, we see the goodness as beacons of light in the darkness. Yet we know also our need for your healing, forgiving and transforming grace. We ask you to touch our hearts with your love, our lives with your grace and our lips with your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in the quietness of our own hearts for any that we know in need of God's loving presence and his healing grace. We pray for ourselves and our need for his power and his Holy Spirit. In a moment of silence, keep these in your heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for Christians in the world who live in fear of their lives and livelihoods just for loving you. We pray for the people suffering because of the war in Ukraine. We especially think of those that are suffering as a result of the dam breach with devastating flooding. We pray for all the displaced people in the world who've had to flee their homes. Help them to find a home. We pray for all those people who don't have enough to eat. Lord, help to make our world a fairer place. We pray for those who are without shelter and food because of natural disasters. And we pray for world leaders that they will have wisdom in their judgments, restraint in their actions, and love and peace in their hearts. Amen. We pray for all those with a mission to spread the gospel throughout the world. We pray especially for those who we support in the mission field, the Maclean's in Thailand and the Fazakalis in Malawi. We pray that we too can also bear witness to your word. Amen. Lord, we thank you for answered prayer, for the relief of the Colombian family that has Four brave and resilient children returned after many days. Amen. Lord, in the quietness, touch our lives and hold us fast. Lord, in the stillness, share our hurt and our sense of aloneness. Lord, in our weakness, be a strength for us. Lord, in our darkness, be our light and our hope. Lord, in our doubts, be our saviour and friend. Lord, in our lives, be our reason for living. Lord, be our sense of life and our fulfilment and joy. Lord, be the meaning of our service and our obedience. Lord, be at the heart of our worship and celebration. Lord, be our Lord here and everywhere until the end and beyond. Amen. Lord, you have welcomed us, you have healed us, you have restored us, you have empowered us. Send us out to live and work to your glory. Send us out to declare our love. Send us out to proclaim your goodness this day and always. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sandy. And we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray this prayer of thankfulness together. Almighty God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings, and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we have, we have notices and we have bands to be read. Exciting. So first let me do the bands. And um, we have here Jack. And Nicole, so I publish the bands of marriage between Jack Maddock of the parish of St. Mark Breadbury and Nicole Capper, also of the parish of St. Mark Breadbury, both with a qualifying connection with this church. And this is for the second time of asking. I also publish the bands of marriage between Frederick David Burrow of the parish of St. James Congleton and Emily Philomena Ray, also of the parish of St. James Congleton, both of whom have a qualifying connection with this church, and this is also for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason 
in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Lovely, and let, let us pray for them now. Father, we thank you for the excitement, the joy of the approaching weddings for Michael and Sylvia and Jack and Nicole, for Frederick and Emily. We thank you that they have come here to make their vows before you. And they will come and they will be in front of their family and friends to join themselves together in your love. And so we pray for them as they prepare for these events. We pray in all of the discussions and decisions. They won't lose sight of what's important, of their love for each other, and that they would be aware of your presence with them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so now we have some notices. And um, the first one is obviously about the Rose Queen fate next week. Uh, this, is this is going to be a new thing for us. We don't know what's coming, but we know it's going to be fun. There's posters everywhere, and the excitement is mounting. Um, and I think that what we're being asked for is um, for donations of items for the Rose Queen hampers and raffle prizes. So if you've got anything that would be suitable, um, you could leave them at the back of church or hand them in at the school, and so they will be important for the raffle. Um, and please encourage friends and neighbours to come. Uh, so I think it's going to be a great event. And we're going to have the Rose Queen here in the service on Sunday. So that's going to be very special. Um, yes, now Angie is here. And um, she's collecting uh, bags of things. Yes. Oh, yes, with that there. Yes. So can everyone hear that? Cakes and scones. And how do they get them to you? Do they just bring them along? So the more the merrier. So do you get through a lot of scones? Yes. So we need scones, really, and cakes. But is it cream teas that we're looking forward to? Oh, how wonderful. So yeah, I'll make some scones. And so yeah, anyone else who, who likes scones, please make them. Uh, that would be great. Um, yes, Emily's here. Uh, sorry, Angie's here. And... Angie and Victoria have been um, asking for um, second-hand things to go into bags. And I've just talked to Angie now and found out what it's all about. And the weight is important. So if you've got things that you want to get rid of, um, if you've got, you've got heavy things um, like shoes, and uh, the, the weight is, is what matters. And they go off and they're, they're weighed, and then the school gets money um, in return for the weight of things. So either leave them with, um, is, what's the date? The date is the, the 22nd. So do we have another week before then? Next oh, it's next Thursday. So right, next Thursday, um, if you could drop them in at school, that would be the most helpful. But if otherwise, you could leave them with Victoria, or you could drop them in at school at a push before then, but they haven't got much space to store them. But that would be really helpful. Um, I think that's everything, but apart from, did you s go to the watch party at St. Michael's in Mac on the 20th of May? If not, uh, there's a, a stream, um, you, can, you can watch it, and Bishop Mark is giving feedback on the diocesan initiative, Cast the Net Wide. And I have to confess, I haven't watched it yet, but I want to, so I'm just reminding you that it's there to watch, and so please do if you can. I think that's everything, unless somebody else has got another notice. No? Great. And so now we're going to sing our last hymn. And during this hymn, the collection plate will be brought round. Um, and so we'll take our time and it will go round and then we'll, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll pray for the money that's been given. So, uh, yes, we'll just wait for David so he doesn't trip. You've got plenty of time, David. <laughs> so we're going to stand and sing our last hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
we thank you for your faithfulness to us that uh, we see every day. We thank you that we have been able to come this morning and to be reminded of that your promise to us to lead us into freedom and into life. And so take these gifts that we offer you as a token of our appreciation and love. And we pray that they will be used to further your kingdom here in this place and beyond. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> And so the blessing of the Lord God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.